Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy. I have been so excited to share this video with you guys. It was so fun to make and to edit this week. I'm showing you the process of a painting from painting it all the way to the end when it is on one of my collector's walls. My first large painting to sell got snatched up really fast and I want to show you the process of me kind of struggling through it and painting it. As soon as I posted this painting on Instagram, it got snatched up by a gentleman that was buying it for his wife for an anniversary gift, which I just loved that. Sonia reached out to me after she got the painting and she showed me some little video clips of taking it to the framers and I said, hey, would you like to work with me and film the whole process? and I can add that to the video at the end. And she said yes. So it was really fun to see. I cannot wait for you to see Sonia's house. It is amazing. It is filled with color and pattern. In fact, we've already talked a little about me possibly coming and painting at her house. You're gonna die when you see this one bedroom and the wallpaper. I mean, I'm like, can we please just wallpaper my entire house on that? Let's jump into this week's video. As you can see, I have set up here in our dining room. This is rarely a dining room. It is either painting room. Lately, it's been my packing room. I've, we cleaned it out this weekend, but there was just packaging stuff, boxes and blah, 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 everywhere. You could not even move in here. But this is also a room that gets collected up with paintings, just so many paintings. Most of these are oil paintings from forever ago. Recently on Instagram stories, I went through all of these paintings and just showed all of them. And I'll have it saved in my highlights so you can go back and look at those. Here's my table. So this is part of my painting stuff. And then I have still life stuff. I also shared in the stories, went through and showed all these paintings and talked about those. Here's my setup. And here is my progress so far. The lighting in this room is really wonderful. And I thought I'd see how the whole red table thing came out. If you're wondering like, oh no, aren't you worried about messing up your table? I'm not because this is for one a very substantial table but it used to be somebody's art table kids art table and so there's just paint all over it there's paint that's like coming off and i've actually painted birds whoops there's just a hint of a bird right there i've painted birds here and there on it and it's funny kids always when they come over want to sit here they're always like i'm going to sit by the bird so i'm not painting this exactly as it's set up it's basically how it is i like that i can kind of take some things here take some things from the wall like i'm adding this painting i realized it's too big i need to make her not so big and i also have the view outside which is really wonderful and so i can use that back here so i'm just going to set up and keep ch -ch -ch chunking away at this. I'm loving how it is coming along so far. And I'm loving all the pattern. I'm having a lot of fun with all the pattern. Let me show you where I am. I'm not sure how the lighting's gonna be because the sun, can you see how it's starting to creep in on me? And in just a minute, it will be on the actual canvas. See, it's sneaking in right here and it's gonna go and just keep growing. And I've been standing in the sun, um, so it's nice and warm. Y'all yeah, probably like, we don't care. It just shows the painting, okay. Oh, and the flowers are still looking oh so pretty. They're really, really inspiring. Okay, let's get back to this painting. I'm wondering if it looks like I made much progress or not. Uh, I'm really loving how these flowers turned out right here. Wanted something dark so it would pop, you know, come forward and this stuff recede. I knew I needed to get some darks in and some lights. So all of this kept your interest here, but then everything else can move your eye around. Obviously I still have the lady to work on and bananas. Bananas always feel easy. I really don't have a lot left to do. I don't think. I may still do something in this little corner, like put part of the chair. I haven't decided yet if this is gonna be enough once I get this in, because this will be a nice dark. So we'll say I'm super happy with it. Ooh, it's been really fun. Hopefully I'll be able to finish it and it will be 
good since I've been struggling so much with canvas lately. Let's see what it looks like this way. I'm gonna clean that before I get too exhausted. I hate when I get to the point where I'm just like, somebody pick me up from the floor. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm loving how this turned out. Oh, 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 I'm so glad I thought of this because I wanted to tell you guys I've been loving pattern lately. You do not have to spend a lot of money on fabric and stuff to get pattern. Let me show you what I've pulled out. Right here I have a very old dish rag that has holes in it. But it's got a great pattern. A piece of paper that actually has some mold on it because I had some fruit on it that molded. And you can see that's what I did here, but then I decided to put some pattern on it to create some interest. That blue thing back there is a skirt that does not fit me anymore and it was given to me from a friend from Africa when she was there visiting, and I love the pattern on it, and I use it a lot. This right here, I've not put in the painting yet, but I put it up there thinking I may, but that's a, a skirt. I'm kind of thinking about going to the Goodwill shop and just looking at clothes and, you know, even sheets or towels. I mean, there's just professional. <laughs> that's my camera after I bought it. Trying to get like a pretty scene for you guys and it's just not happening. Uh, yeah, so think about pattern a different way. Maybe it's a sock that you're gonna throw away that has a nice pattern on it. You can throw that on your still life for a little of pattern. You know, it could be something in the background. So I'm just not kind of experimenting with that. But I'm really loving it. And I was gonna go to the fabric store and get maybe like a yard of fabric of things that I liked, but then I thought I bet I could spend way less money if I would just go to Goodwill and think about pattern. And what's wonderful about that, as I'm going through like the clothes, I don't even have to look at the size. I can just look for a pattern that I like. So maybe in the kids area. I mean, there's just all kinds of areas I think that you could look. Tip of the day, that's what I'm gonna do. And if I do that soon, I'll bring you guys with me. I mean, I've still got this. Oh my gosh, why can't I be professional? Oh, okay, it's just, it wants to be in there. All right, here we go, it's in. <laughs> I gotta go, I'm gonna go clean up and try to be more professional. Can, it, can I be? I don't think so, sorry. But you guys still love me, don't you? Okay, good. All right, now I, it's really the end of the day and I need to stop doing art, but I'm not. I was editing the video for this week and got inspired. And so now I'm set up basically behind the still life. So there's my easel over there. And I'm going to take my Karen Dash Neo Color 2 water soluble crayon thingies and play around in my sketchbooks. Probably won't get to finish one because I've, the way I've been doing it is putting down some color and then wetting it, letting that dry and then kind of just building up the layers. I don't know what I'm gonna do, play around for just a second. I was holding the camera with my left hand and covering up the microphone, so it was terrible audio. What I wanted to show you was I put the color down and then I dipped my fingers in water and used my hand to just kind of activate the neo color. What's nice about this is you can feel the crayon. It's a really nice feeling. You get some interesting marks. The colors also really change. Some of them, uh, when they are wet, they get really bright. I definitely encourage using the neo color like this because because they just feel amazing on your fingers. You can also tell when the page is, is getting too roughed up, the page will start, I don't know, kind of feeling different. And then if you will just stop and let the Neo Color completely dry, you can do another layer on top and it won't reactivate it. And it also protects the paper because it kind of seals it. I don't know really how to explain it, but it's just a really wonderful technique that I really encourage. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop now. I only did one. I just kept working in this one sketchbook. See if I can prop it up on my leg there. And there's Coop waiting to be fed for his dinner. I really don't want to work on this anymore. It was fun to do. It's not great, but it was just fun, you know? There's nothing that I will probably ever use this as a reference for, but there's just something about getting your fingers dirty and mucking around while you have these beautiful flowers in front of you. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just priceless. And I do learn, you do learn in this. Like I don't, this area right here, there's something not going good. When I take that away, it's a lot better composition. So it's definitely not a waste. It's definitely not a masterpiece, but it was fun. Okay, I'm gonna go feed the Koopy. Hey Coop. Hey Coop, I'm ignoring you, mom. You've been ignoring me and I'm going to ignore you now. But as soon as you get up, I'm gonna sound like a rhinoceros getting up. Okay, watch this, here we go. This is still drying, so let me set this carefully over here. Okay, this is what I deal with every day. Watch this. Are you kidding me? You're not gonna do it? No. 
Oh, okay. Oh boy. He's like, let's go eat. Let's go eat, mom. He's like, I'll show you the way. <laughs> this way. Good morning, guys. I am about to get back to tackling that painting. I've been working on it for days and days. And what is today? Thursday. I finished the video early. I got everything done yesterday. And I'm gonna spend the next two days just painting like a maniac. I don't have a lot left, I don't think, to do on this painting. I'm gonna show it to you in just a minute. But I wanted to show you a new tool that I recently found that any of you could use. You have something like this laying around your house and this is gonna be a game changer for me and I wanna show it to you. Here are my game changing tools. Well, not the coffee, actually. That is a game changer too. A lot of you guys know that I use this right here. It's got three separate things. It's got a value finder, a mirror that I could not live without a mirror. Looking at a painting backwards is just such a game changer. And then I don't use this. This is like a compositional thing. I hardly ever use this. Peggy Crow Roberts used to make these and sell them, but I don't think she does anymore, but you could always reach out to her. I think if she gets bombarded enough by you guys, maybe she would make some more, but you could always find a mirror anywhere. The value finder is a big deal for me. I do use that a whole lot. It's just really a piece of red plexiglass. Recently I was watching, what is it? Portrait Artist of the Year. And there was a guy using, I think it was like just a piece of glass with some tape over it. So to make the image blurry for some reason, I got to thinking about these glasses that I have. I may have just found these at an antique store or something. Let me see if this is going to work to show you guys. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to or not, but when I look through it, I don't think it's going to work because this camera lens is not like my eyeballs, but basically it skews the subject in a big way. So that's going to be helpful. The other thing that I found was looking through just a glass bottle, really skewed things and it, and it changed when I turned it this way and the closer I got to it or the further away. And so then I can just see value and color and simple shapes. I got several different bottles out. This was a good one too, the closer up I got. Yeah, I like that one, look at that. Isn't that cool? So like I'm thinking about looking at that vase right there. And when you're looking at it in real life, what happens is your eyes say, that's a vase, that's a leaf, that's a stem, that's the red table. But when you do this, you just see shapes and you see value very easily. And then if you translate that, into your painting. That's a big deal. That helps a lot. I'm going to keep these things close by and start using them quite a bit. But let me show you the painting. I don't have the lights on in here today just because I'm enjoying just the natural light. So I'm hoping that this will be good. This area right here is bothering me. I feel like I need to do something. I'm going to ask Grady. I'm going to have him come in and tell me. Like I won't say, hey, is that bothering you? I ask him to come in and like look at things and he'll say, oh, my eye keeps going to that. I do feel like that needs some stems, but I do want this to be kind of the focal area. So I think first I'm going to tackle that lady. There's some shapes as far as like here. I don't, this red part is actually part of the vase, but it's not reading as that. It's reading as a shadow, but I don't really have shadows. And again, there's a shadow here that I don't really want to read as a shadow. So I'm going to work on little things like that. Can you see that vase right there? See how it's at the red bottom? Also, I had this, the flowers that I painted were in that vase back there, but when I painted that vase, that seemed to, I don't know, the shape, all of it, your eye was going right there. It was because of the value. So then I went and got that vase and literally just stuck it in front of that thing of flowers, and that's how I painted it. But I have got to finish this because it's at a stage where if I stop right now, I will not come back to it. So I need to keep chunking away. I just need to make myself get in. I'm gonna tackle this lady and some of these little other areas and probably mess it up and maybe paint all over it again. I think this is a winner. I'm really happy with all the pattern. I'm going to drink some more coffee, get my, what should we call this? Paint, uh, something changer, changes the wall, wall, wall. You should try it. If you try it, let me know how it goes.
think I'm done for now. I signed it. I feel like I resolved a little better this area. I'm happier with it. It's not just this block of like white. Oh, and I finished the lady. I'm so happy with her. I really like the way she turned out. I was just happy with her. It's just some interest up there. Things like this point up. These flowers point this way. I'm hoping it just kind of makes your eyes stay in the painting and look around. I'm gonna go put it on the wall somewhere around the house and live with it for a little bit. And I'm gonna go start another one because I'm really loving all these flowers. I wanna use them to the max. Okay, I'm still working on this painting. I feel like I've got everything resolved except for this area. I've been working on this lady. I've been trying to save her, which could be a problem. I made the value lighter. I love her face. I'm trying to save her face, but I can definitely tell it's too wide. So I'm now gonna try chopping it off some and seeing how that works. Mm -mm. And I may end up having to get rid of her altogether. I don't know. That's where I am. And I'm gonna just try to resolve that. I really liked the whole painting up here before I made the value lighter, but it wasn't working. And I can't save this whole painting just because I like one area. You just can't do that. Sometimes you have to get rid of what you really like to make the painting work. So I'm going to work on that right now. I find when I get to this stage of a painting where I just have one section, it's just so hard to be brave and to keep your brush strokes loose and the edges with some character in them. If you can tell, I'm gonna just kind of sneak up on this area and try to carve in. It really did need this and it really worked. And I was also trying to save the background because it had this thin quality about the paint that I really liked. But as I started working and realized that it needed to be darker, I was able to bring these little flowers forward as I carved into them. And overall, it just worked so much better. So it just pays off to be brave, but it is hard. It's really hard. I feel like that made such a difference. It's still wet, so it could dry a little too dark. I'm not sure. I feel like that whole area being a little darker is so much better. Making it more matte and less transparent pushed it back, I feel like. Yeah, good decision. I'm glad I didn't get nervous about it and just jumped in there. I'm gonna be able to keep my lady because of that, I think. Yay. I am finished with the painting and I am thrilled with it. I don't think there's a single part about this painting that I don't like. I'll show you my favorite part here in just a minute though. So I love how this jug turned out. I painted it multiple times and I think each layer you can see like little bits of it. But I think my favorite part of this entire painting is the way I painted this fabric back here. I just love the way it was painted. The, the red that you can see poking through here is the table, but it works as the stripes. Now I love things like this. This is a cheap plastic watering thing, but I loved its shape and it's super fun to paint. I mean, so make sure you look around your house. Just ordinary objects objects can be super, super fun. I'm thrilled with it. I love how Hilda turned out. I've just started another large one that's similar to this. It's going to be in the dining room on the red table, but pattern Galanza, or what's that word? Today we're packing this one up to go to its new home. Bye red table and Hilda. Hope you have a nice time at your new home. Ben, what do you think about all this? Yeah, do you have anything to say? Nope. Okay, so that's the finished painting. Let's jump into Sonia getting the painting, her taking it to the framers, all the way to putting it up on her wall. Thank you, Sonia, so much for this footage. It was so wonderful to see. How cute is this framing store? She sent these pictures to me with the different frame options, and when I was looking through them, I was like, nope, nope. Yes, I love that one. My favorite one was her choice, which was really fun. I really got excited to see what it was gonna look like framed in this. And then I loved how she took us from the front door all the way upstairs to the place where she was going to put the painting. She first showed this to me to just give me an idea of here's where it's gonna be. So it kind of built some fun anticipation. And she's got the most amazing art all through her house. So I feel really honored to be in such a really beautiful space. And then she even brought us along to go pick it up, which she was so excited about. And I was so excited to see the final piece too. It turned out so good. I could barely handle all the cuteness of her dog. I think it's a schnauzer. We used to have a schnauzer too. It is just too cute. Reminds me of Cooper. Like, what are you doing, mom? Do you need any help? Here, I could probably help give you a hand with that, dad, and help you hang that. And at this point, I feel like there should be like some cheering and applauding. Yay! 
like doesn't it look so good on that wallpapered patterned wall it feels like a pattern that should be in the painting so it just i feel like works so well it's just really a treat for me to be able to see a painting in its new home on the wall and a family enjoying it and a lot of you are collectors now too which is just really special to me that you would want my art and that you would want it in your home and that it's something that you if you are interested in my work, make sure to check out my website. I'll put it here. And anytime you see something here or on Instagram, you can always just message me. I have so much work. I I'm not able to put it all up on the website, but the website does give you an idea of sizes and prices. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will see you guys back here next week. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.